be the first real African champ trained, born, bred in Africa. I'm the African fighter in the UFC. We breathe the African air. We wake up in Africa every day. We train in Africa, we're Africa born, we're African raised. Before I go off on this tirade, I advise you to please go and watch the previous video I posted about Israel crashing to places, you know, after party, after beating Robert Whittaker at the UFC 290. So, let's get straight into it. This narrative that fight fans always create where they say, you know, this fighter is cringe or this fighter is classless or this fighter is, you know, whatever you want to call it. I just want to set the record straight for most people that are still delusional. There is nothing dignified about fighting for money. Let's get that out of the way. There is nothing dignified about punching your fellow man in the face and breaking his possible future just because someone offered you a piece of bread. There is nothing dignified about the fight game. Mike Tyson said it best. At a point, it meant the world. But when you've made the money, it's like, why should you even be doing this? Why should you be subjecting yourself to such torture and allowing somebody to humiliate you in front of other people for the fun of other people? So there is nothing dignified about fighting. It's like back in the gladiator days, you know, the Roman Emperor days and the Roman Empire. You know how gladiators used to come out and kill each other just for everybody to be happy and excited, drinking and, you know, doing whatever it was they were doing in the crowd. But there was nothing dignified about it. There's nothing dignified about fighting. There are a thousand other ways to make money in life and fighting is the least and the most basic and the most down low form of enterprise so just because we all enjoy fighting or we just we all enjoy watching fights and analyzing fights and talking about fighters because i mean it's a form of entertainment right does not mean that we should get lost on what the truth actually is which is the fact that like i said and i'm going to repeat there is nothing classy about fighting now martial arts in itself is, there's something classy about it you learn to defend yourself and you learn to control yourself you learn discipline you learn hard work you learn all those other virtues that come with it but when it comes to fighting for money, you have completely jumped away from anything dignified. You're now just like a bull in the circus where they wave a flag and you run towards the flag and they wave the flag this way and you run towards it. That's, that, that's what you are. There's nothing dignified about it. So that being said, let me come back to this Israel Adesanya versus Duplessis situation. The second narrative is, oh, uh, I thank God my kids were asleep when Easy, before Izzy began his rant. Now, um, at least my kids have someone to look up to. My kids have a middleweight champion they can look up to. That's in Duplessis now, implying that Izzy is a bad example of a man to look up to. And your children are, you know, possibly going to be better off looking up to Duplessis. But my first question is this. Why are your children looking up to fighters in the first place? There are a thousand other good and more beneficial, more life-changing things or more life-changing people in the world that children can look up to. Why are your children looking up to fighters? What is dignified about the fight game? Remember the first point I made. There is nothing dignified about the fight game. So when you say, oh, this person carries himself with some class, carries himself with some class, but he's ready to put another man's head in the dirt and possibly shave years off that man's life just to make some bread. You're ready to injure another man and possibly give him no chance at whatsoever at the future with his children just because someone offered you a few million dollars. And then you turn around and want to talk about class. There is nothing classy about fighting. Okay, that's the second point. So and then a lot of people say, well, uh, Duplessis did not say anything about Izzy or Kamar Usman or uh, Francis that he just said he was going to be the real African. Again, I respond to that. I said, or rather I say, why would you even suggest that you're the real African? Why would you even suggest it? I put out a poll recently. I said, if I came to your house and I told your wife or your mother or your girlfriend that I am the only man in this house right now, how would you feel? sitting across from me listening to me say that are you going to be offended the answer of course is yes so if you're going to be offended why can you not understand that the african fighters in the ufc would have taken the places comments somehow because that was what he was trying to imply that he's more african than them even if he did not mention their names just that statement alone saying that he, he's the real african champion that means others are the fake african champions then I went on to even explain the reasons why most West Africans leave Africa for better, for better pastures. And given the fact that Duplessis' ancestral history is imperialism, 
slavery and apartheid in Africa. He has no reason to even bring that angle into the conversation. If you're looking for a fight, go straight and look for the fight. Say whatever you want to say about your opponent. But once you touch that racial gate and then the floodgates come crashing down, you cannot blame anybody for it. So now, Easy is catching a lot of flack for saying a lot of things, you know, calling the place the N-word in the cage and all that stuff. But the reality is you cannot determine how your opponent reacts to what you said because you first said it. It's like when Conor McGregor said what he said about Khabib's dad, for instance. Habib had all the temerity in the world. He could have said anything he wanted to say at that point about Conor McGregor's family, but he didn't. Instead, he wanted to fight just to prove a point. But that was Khabib's choice. Rather, that was Habib's choice. Everybody cannot be Habib. Okay? Everybody cannot be that guy that you just talk trash about and the guy just takes it on the chain and he's just ready to do you damage on fight night. Everybody cannot be that way. And easier this than for one. And listen now, you can say, oh, or you're just an easy fanboy making an excuse for you. You know, I don't care about that. Whatever you want to think, you think. But the point I'm trying to make is, let's get to saying the truth. You understand? Let's get to saying the truth. The only reason why I opened this channel is because, number one, I love fighting. And I love discussing the fight game. It's entertainment. But at the same time, I lo also love telling the truth. And the truth is what I'm going to tell you, regardless of, you know, whether it's going to get me whatever you know a lot of channels i'm not dissing anybody but i'm just telling you guys the truth a lot of channels just like lying everybody's going to try to be politically correct and play that slim thin line between avoiding the truth and not trying to offend anybody you know and this is not i'm not trying to even go deep into the racial conversation because this has no place in fighting nobody cares if you're white black asian hispanic nobody gives it as long as you can put it down when it's time to entertain the fans that's all that matters but when a fighter starts going down that line or going down that lane who are you to now tell the other fighter not to respond or who are you to now tell the other fighter to keep it classy there's no class anymore because you've already opened the gates you've already opened the gates to stereotype you've already opened the gates to to someone looking at the other person and feeling that this person is not african enough because they don't train in africa or because they don't live in africa you understand that is that is that's exactly what i'm trying to explain to you guys could have sought for a fight with easy by trash talking from now till tomorrow saying all sorts of things about him but just stay away from that african conversation what i'm not going to do is do that line of political correctness and try not to you know offend anybody and try not try to you know try to appease or please any groups of people on this channel there are white people following me they are asians they are Hispanic. any kind of i don't even see the race of anybody all i see is just human beings you understand we are all part of one race which is the human race but as far as this particular topic is concerned you know duplessis was completely wrong just like if i came to your house and said i was the man of the house i cannot get mad if you stand up and punch me in the face because you i know the implication of my statement i know what i'm trying to imply even if i do not insult you even if i don't insult you directly i know exactly what i'm saying by making that statement your support or non-support for a fighter does not change the outcome of a fight if you say oh this person has lost a lot of fans by playing this antique or by being so so and so or by being a bad character it does not determine or change anything that is going to happen in his fight in fact it's going to make you even turn up to watch the fight just so you can watch him get beat and if he wins you're going to turn up to again his next fight just to watch him get beat. you're going to keep turning up to his fight just to watch him get beat, which is exactly what the floyd mayweather blueprint taught us you understand so your support or non-support does not change the outcome of the fight and within everything i've said so far dana white is just the right person to be in charge of the ufc because he understands these people are monsters that have to face each other in the cage just to try and kill themselves for money you cannot be the one to tell them what they can or cannot say. It's a fight. You're already engaging in the most debasing and dehumanizing activities of all just to make money. So what is then trying to, you know, police what you can say on the microphone when you're ready to deliver a kick to somebody's head that might end their life? But you want to draw the line at, oh, don't say this on the microphone or don't say that. And Dana White understands this perfectly. So if you've never fought before, you've never trained to fight before, you've never been a fighter, you've never been around anywhere, anywhere around an octagon or a ring, someone has never punched you in the liver before, someone has never kicked you in the head, someone has never given you a hefty elbow to your, to your nose, 
try getting hit in the head 200 times and see if your head is still correct and see if your brain is still working normally like if normal functional civilian's brain should be working that's why mike tyson used to have all those outbursts all those years because people don't understand fighting they just want to grab the microphone as a reporter you know say all this and point all accusation fingers at fighters and accuse them of so many things you will have not faced the pain that these guys face in the ring or in the octagon now your excuse might be well if that is so then why are all of them not like that temperaments differ just like at your workplace the way your job stresses you and the way you react to it is not the same way every other person at your, as your workplace reacts to it everybody deals with stress differently some people their way of dealing with stress is drugs i'm just calling it speed is speed some of them really their career is done they start drinking and drinking and drinking their life away some of them nearly their career is done they start blowing their money on casinos or blowing their money on you know bets or, or playing uh, you know betting odds and all that stuff there's always something where they or somewhere where they go to to ease their pain because it's like after fighting there's fighting is the most is the loneliest sport in the world when your career dies nobody asks you anything nobody's going to want to check on you nobody is asking about you how many of you have gone to these former fighters whom their careers have you know have long gone to actually show that you care about them none none of you but you can sit in your chair eating your popcorn and say anything you want to say about any fighter in the world and as far as you're concerned you're right